with his fourth week in a row of therapy through comedy, make some noise for Bill! Peace and blessings, my beloved people out there. Give it up for yourselves for surviving through the fucked up ages we're living through. I can't front. Personally, I feel embarrassed for a lot of y'all motherfuckers out here. <laughs> Make some noise if you are part of the hip hop culture so much of us love. Yeah, that's right. Now, shout out. You see, that's what I'm talking about, though. All of these fans for hip hop, and none of y'all are doing a goddamn thing about all of the actual crime, violence, and destruction they end up living out and spreading through this new age of hip hop. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that hits different, I know, I know. Peep game though, ladies don't care about that destruction coming through the speakers as long as they can get their motherfucking twerking on. That's their only concern now, a hot beat they can twerk on. Am I lying? Exactly. And the fellas don't give a damn about that destruction coming through the speakers as long as they can blast the music as loud as possible to hopefully attract some local lady that hears the music and starts motherfucking twerking. Meanwhile, the rest of the community is literally experiencing those same crime, violence, and destruction with your choppers to the heads and fentanyl to make it spread. That's literally in the lyrics. I'm not making that up. But yo, there's only one reason why this is possible amongst the Asiatic black men and women of the culture. It's called escapism. Yeah. Now, for those of you who haven't interacted with a dictionary since middle school, pobrecito. Nah, but this escapism is basically the action and process of trying to balance out a perceived loss. In other words, escapism is when people misdirect themselves and others towards a new focus that they feel is more manageable while ignoring the true facts and problems they refuse to face and correct. So how does this tie in with my embarrassment for hip hop? Well, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> hip hop is its own culture, but hip hop is a baby to the blues, funk, and jazz. Who are the babies to the Negro spirituals? And when we view the ancestors who were singing and slaving to Negro spirituals, first, they were literally either singing to escape from their conditions mentally, or to actually send messages to fellow slaves of when to actually escape from the motherfucking plantation. And second, we tend to view all slaves as courageous and rebellious, at least when presented with a chance, right? But not fucking likely. Many slaves and freedmen sung and listened to Negro spirituals all the time and were still cowards that only used the music for personal joy. I know it was real talk. Can you imagine that confusing shit though? Think about it. So you're a rebellious slave, on the lookout, trying to find out who you could trust and seek for help. Then you hear this big black sambo motherfucker singing Negro spirituals in a thundering James Earl Jones voice talking about wade in the water you hear that shit right and you run to this location for a sanctuary possibly connected to the underground railroad and shit and this motherfucker not only refuses to help you he alarms the crackers that a runaway is trying to escape we need to stop being like these scary goofy sample acting fools relying on escapism to solve problems this is why the great now sister, legendary icon, Kanye West, was 100% motherfucking right when he said slavery was a choice. Yeah, it's all about escapism on many levels. I don't give a fuck how you feel about the facts, but the fact is that every slave that was ever enslaved had the choice of following the orders and hoping that the master treats you right or not following the orders and dealing with whatever possible circumstances came with it. Of course, most would die for refusing, but that doesn't mean it's still not a choice to make. Just like the rappers that choose to push this escapism 
by way of Willie Lynch on us. Kanye ain't out here pushing choppers and fentanyl on us. That nigga only pushing Jesus. <laughs> Real shit. And I ain't even a Jesus junkie and all that. But I think Jesus is at least one notch better than choppers and fentanyl. Respectfully, respectfully. We're being possessed and persuaded to not only divide and conquer ourselves, but also to follow the path of all of our ancestors that ignored our true struggles as a people and escaped into this fake shit. These are the same Negroes that when Gabriel Prosser was planning Gabriel's rebellion in Virginia, 1800, they escaped from the thought of having to give up the few privileges they had. And 6-9 on Gabriel before he could begin. Yeah, said it. Just like how we use ether when somebody demolishes somebody now, even as an either quick diss or a nice clapback. Anytime somebody snitch or turn their back on somebody that they shouldn't have, we're gonna call that 6ix9ine. So yeah, they 6ix9ine Gabriel before it could even begin. These also the same Negroes that when Denmark Vesey was planning the Rising in South Carolina, 1822, they escaped from the thought of joining Vesey to free the slaves and join the free people of Haiti after the revolution. Instead, <laughs> they didn't want to lose their precious few privileges. So they destroyed their rebellion and got many innocent people's lives lost just for being connected to Denmark Vesey. When we fast forward to today, things are backwards. The leaders of the communities today are mainly the rappers. But instead of leading us to salvation and liberation, they are now the ones that have completely escaped and avoid the idea of any true change. For the record, I'm a rapper myself. Obviously, with the amount of shit I'm talking about these niggas, I don't rap or act like these niggas. Real shit. But that's not my problem at all. It's the motherfucking escapism that I can't stand. Case in point. If you check the stats on these record company breakdowns, the rappers are on the bottom of the motherfucking food chain when it comes down to profiting off of their own music. That's just the facts. I'm not saying that they're not valuable now. <laughs> we all know that on the plantation, it was always obvious who was the most valuable slaves. The one everybody's picking four tons of cotton a week. This motherfucker picking 12. That's the MVP of the motherfucking plantation. Get a little extra piece of pig feed and all that type of shit but at the end of the day. That's all. Just like now, different trinkets, right? Just like the rappers now, you know, their owners. All they care about is the fact that their investments. It's called ROI, return on investment. We see the rappers with the big chains, Blood diamond rings, earrings, watches, foreign cars, living a lavish life. But they damn sure never show us the fucked up record contracts they signed. <laughs> they got your Peter Pan friendly ass paying Paul, Tom, Dick, and motherfucking Harry. So, while the rappers know that everyone from the managers to the producers to the record execs are capitalizing off of their music more than the rappers do, they go into escapism and focus on the choppers to the head and fentanyl to make it spread. <laughs> we act like we don't know this though. It's not like rappers aren't getting into shootouts and or arrested for gang or drug related crimes at least once a week. Am I lying? That's not what people living lavish lifestyles do, MC fuckface. <laughs> the real rich buy land on land where they can have as many legal choppers they want without worrying about a raid. Real shit. The rich also don't get busted for those low to mid-level drug offenses. They hire their own personal drug buyers that keep their secrets secret for years. That's the shit. You know why rappers aren't moving like the rich? <laughs> Most of them are only rich on Instagram. Yep, I said it. Instagram is clearly the official home of all escapism. Yeah, only on Instagram can you be the owner of two Ferraris, a Bentley, a French Bulldog, 15 different gold chains, 15 different types of shades, with a Luke flow of non-stop bad bitches by your side, while having $12 in your bank account and $350 on an EBT. Yeah, that's Instagram. 
and that's a typical account of the regular niggas escaping reality. So, anytime drama comes their way, they are quick to escape the reality and join the drama. That's the cycle. And rappers take it to the extreme measures fast because they know, literally, every little thing they make, whew, it counts more than the fans can even imagine. They're one step away from living like the fans. That's the reality. Prime example is this recent Poo Shiesty shooting in Miami. Yeah, gotta touch on it. Don't get me wrong, I fucks with all rappers, new and old school, for the sake of the culture. Regardless of how you feel about a slave, I mean, a rapper, <laughs> each rapper provides for many people around and connected with that rapper. Right. It's only honorable to respect this fact. We gotta respect that. But, for those who don't know, allegedly, Pooh Shiesty was in a strip club with 40,000 cash in his back pocket. Someone knocked the 40 thou wow out his back pocket, and when the people scrambled for the money, Pooh Shiesty allegedly pulled out a pocket rocket, and a bouncer in the club saw him and put his hands over Pooh Shiesty's hands. You know, to try to prevent him from John wicking that bitch. And yada, 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 the security ends up with one to the leg. And Pooh Shiesty is currently locked up without bond. With this new set of charges on top of another case he was already dealing with in Miami. But the moral of the story is, if he really was doing business like a rich person, I don't think he would be accepting cash payments like that. <laughs> Why your transfers and checks never get knocked out of back pockets? I'm just saying. And even the two to five actually rich rappers out there, at least they travel in nightclubs like how they supposed to with personal security. But regardless, if that same situation happened to a truly rich person, they would chalk that 40 dial wow up as a loss to the game. My only concern was, well, if the bouncer didn't try to stop him, <laughs> What could have happened when he was willing to escape his reality as this paid big time rapper and put that pocket rocket out on everybody around him? Imagine being in a strip club with a shooter and the shooter is about to shoot everyone he sees with money in their hands. What? He allegedly shot the person who could have saved him from shooting a lot more than just one person. But in conclusion, since the cycles of destruction keep getting pushed on us, it's time for us to push back. We gotta boycott the destructive music. I mean, not all together, like I said, cause people eating off this, but at least in public. Hopefully, the rappers will start boycotting these bad deals so they can really start being rich and wiser with their decision making. I'm out. <laughs>